Uh, this is, um, again, this is not a specific case, but just to talk about a little uh, bit of a, a newer uh, procedure that we've been doing uh, with some of these Fontan patients, and it's uh, the transjugular liver biopsy in the Fontan patients. Now, you guys know that uh, with the Fontan physiology, the venous pressures are, are increased, right? That makes sense. Output may be a little lower, and as a result of that, uh, the it, the, the higher pressures uh, can impact the liver over a long period of time. It can decrease the portal vein flow uh, uh, as well as the saturations, and over time those, those uh, uh, changes in physiology in the fontan can lead to liver injury. Um, we know now that, that we're following more and more of these kids into the second and third and even fourth a decade that the liver becomes a problem and so you start to develop hepatopathies involving fibrosis, cirrhosis as those patients age. Now the significance of this is unclear. We know what happens in the adult type fibrosis, cirrhosis from let's say alcohol and other reasons. Uh, that definitely increases the risk of uh, hepatocarcinoma. Um, but we think that, of course, the liver fibrosis in the Fontan uh, has a little bit of a different pathophysiology. Uh, maybe the end pathway is still fibrosis and cirrhosis, but how it got there is not, not, not the same as the adult types of, of that. Um, so over uh, the last, I would say, five years now, uh, several institutions around the country has started to look at prospectively how to follow these liver um, changes and what can we do to try to improve that. Again, this is more for long-term um, uh, studies. And so there's nothing that is standard as a, a protocol and a treatment algorithm. Uh, in fact, many ways we're still trying to understand this. Now, of course, the traditional way of getting your liver biopsy is through a percutaneous uh, puncture through the skin on the side of, it, just like a transhepatic axis, and getting a specimen there. Uh, but a few of us have sort of started using the the uh, transjugular uh, system to get specimens at the time of the Fontan surveillance so that you don't have to have another procedure or try to coordinate your schedule with the IR guys and certainly it's less painful coming from the skin. So this is the Fontan surveillance protocol that, that we have come up. Again, there are a lot of details here but I'll just highlight that uh, we tend to do a cath of course before the Fontan but at least at five years out, 10 years out, 15 years out, um, try to study these patients and see what's going on. Uh, this includes a, a liver biopsy at about uh, 10 years of, of uh, out from the procedure. Obviously, um, we're looking at all other parameters as well, but one of the other things we've added, again, this protocol is only a year old. We just started doing this um, uh, after I got to Davis, uh, is looking at elastography, which is a way to look at the liver stiffness using ultrasound. Um, I'll show you the machine and, and, and how it's done later. So this basically is the transjugular uh, liver biopsy system. You're coming from the neck going down towards the hepatic veins. And uh, it's, uh, there are several uh, uh, biopsy systems, but the one we use is made by Argon. And basically, uh, it's an 18 needle biopsy, a gauge needle. Uh, there's a 20 millimeter throw. And that is, you'll see that this is a coaxial system where the throw is, uh, when you push the button, it jumps forward, sliding over the needle that has a core in it, and it's that p tissue uh, core that's inside the needle that gets cut by the throw. Um, so you'll get a, about a two centimeter, 17 centimeter length of the uh, tissue because you actually want to see continuity so you can see how the fibrosis uh, take place, whether it's separated or all continuous. And of course, the more continuous the fibrosis, the more severe it is. It goes to a seven French system. So this is what it looks like as you push this, the throw jumps over the needle and captures that core of tissue. Uh, let's see if I can show you that. So this is the, this is the throw here. Here's the needle, and inside the needle is a hollow core where the tissue uh, um, is, is up, obtained when the throw jumps over the needle. So that's how it works. Um, so this is the liver. Now, when you look at the anatomy, obviously you're going into the hepatic veins. You want to go to the largest portion of the uh, largest lobe, and then most people it's going to be on the right side, right? And uh, when you look at the um, area, you try, you're trying to get this, this spot here, somewhere in this area. Uh, you'll take a few pictures just to get yourself the anatomy to know where to go. And of course, the lobes and the liver are, decide, uh, are sort of numbered, and you know, we've always tried to go after sort of the eight and five uh, the, the number five and number eight lobe. Uh, this is staying away from the edge where you don't want to accidentally go out of the ca liver capsule, but it's also a one that's very deep so that you have more space to work with. Uh, so uh, five and eight. 
Um, so here's an example. There's a, the catheter will take some pictures trying to identify where's the best uh, place to, to find that uh, lobe area. Um, one of the things that we learned is that, let's say when you put your sheath in, it's a very stiff system, you notice that we actually try to rotate anterior. So you try to find a posterior segment and then rotate it anterior. Now that's a really important uh, reason, and I'll go over why it's important to rotate anteriorly. Uh, so you notice that as I'm turning, the re red arrow shows that I'm turning this uh, curved uh, system anteriorly towards the front part of the, the liver. Uh, and then, of course, you put out the needle, and then as you squeeze that uh, button on top, the throat goes over the needle and captures that core. So, so you push out, and, and it jumps. And you actually have to hold it because it will jump back if you don't have it. So usually you, one hand is holding it to prevent it from jumping back, and the other hand is pushing that, that uh, knob. Um, and after you, we usually take about three specimens, and afterwards you'll take a picture, and it's not uncommon to see uh, a little bit of a stain in the parenchyma, but again, I'm not that worried about bleeding because it just bleeds back into the veins, right? And what you don't want to see is blood in the retroperitoneum, and that scares you. So the reason why it's important, let's go through the anatomy a little bit here. Um, so now, there are some potential issues. Obviously, the Fontans can be in heterotaxy pa uh, syndrome patients where the liver position may not be all in the standard place. Uh, sometimes you have a left IJ, left Fontan, so the pathway of the Fontan to the liver can be quite diff difficult. The reason why you're going anterior is so the, the kidney is posterior. You don't want a kidney biopsy. Uh, you want a liver biopsy. So you want to stay anterior. Uh, the biggest concern or the, the place where you have the most risk for a complication is perforating the liver capsule. You'll end up with a rectal peritoneal bleed. bleed. Um, now, so we typically will do the uh, biopsy before we give heparin for the Fontan for obvious reasons, right? But there are times when I find that for these heterotaxy syndrome, it actually is better to do it at the end of the, uh, the, the hemodynamics because then the kidneys light up and you know exactly where you are in relationship to the kidneys. And I'll show you that. Again, there's some other rare um, uh, complications where you happen to injure the biliary system and create hemobilia, and that could be a, a, a pain in the butt. Now, the, the system is quite stiff and um, clots can form very easily before you start because you're doing this without heparin. And of course, if you're doing three or four samples, there's a lot of time in between or at least several minutes. And so it's really important to constantly flush that so you don't create a thrombus. This is just an example uh, where one time we had trouble trying to get the stiff system across the fontan into the liver. And instead of just keep going, we actually uh, put a wire, took out, and flushed it all out, and this is what we found. So I'm so glad we made the decision not just keep pushing in and think, in and out. Uh, so those things can, can occur, so you have to pay attention to if you choose to do this before giving heparin. So here's the anatomy and cross-section. I want to just point out, uh, here's the kidneys, right? It's always uh, just in, uh, uh, be behind the liver, so you don't want to turn that curve posterior. You want to stay anterior so that it stays away from the kidneys. Um, here's an example of when you uh, break, rip through the uh, capsule, right? So you see this uh, perforation and bleeding into the rectal perineal space. I borrowed this from uh, one of my friends, uh, Dr. Al Saeed. Um, and so, uh, but the nice thing is that just like when you do your transhepatic axis coming from the other way, you can always throw a coil in and, and get yourself out of trouble there. So it, it's not a huge complication, but it always makes you worry and you have to pay a lot of attention to it. Because again, it's a two centimeter length needle that comes out. And so you have to be aware of what the lengths. When I first started, actually, once I put my sheath in the system, I measured out what the two centimeter would be so that I know where, if my position is enough to get to the liver capsule. Um, I don't do that anymore, but when you first start, just make those measurements for yourself. All right, so uh, here's another case of the 23-year-old, pretty appear healthy appearing young man who was very athletic, uh, very muscular, because he, he lifted weights, did regular exercises, did a lot to keep himself healthy. Now his congenital heart disease with dextrocardia, left atrial somerism, unbalanced right dominant AV canal with the interrupted IVC as a continuation and the left side SVC and cord. Now all this was repair. He had a core repair, had a band and then a Kawashima and then a modified Fontan where the hepatic veins were hooked up to the PAs uh, to get that hepatic factor in to, uh, to, so uh, you don't get the pulmonary AV malformation. So now 
Now, when I first did this hemodynamics, I said, this is an excellent Fontaine physiology. Right? You're looking at the whole Fontaine circulation with mean pressures of anywhere from 13 to 12 and maybe a little narrowing on the RPA. Uh, so I was, thought it was good. The resistance were quite low when we did the calculations. And I said, for sure, this patient is going to do, be doing pretty well. Uh, so, um, and this is that example. You see it's coming from uh, the, uh, the the left IJ, the left Glen, um, and of course there's a Kawashima there as you'll see the catheter come across and we took a picture of the Fontaine, how the Fontaine is connected from the hepatics uh, to the liver and I don't see my... Okay, let's keep going. So here we are coming from the left side through the left Fontaine into the right side. So again, this is, it looks like a pretty straight course, but the stiff system is not that easy to run something through. You actually have to use stiff wires to allow that system to go through. Um, so here we are taking the picture at the very beginning, and in fact, I, I did this at the end of the case, but now you'll see that there's a, a kidney a calyces, and you'll see that you kind of know where to, what to expect. Now, of course, on the AP view, it looks like you're gonna hit the kidneys with this, but in the lateral view, it's away from the kidneys. The kidneys are back here. Um, Actually, I wish I had a better picture to show that the out, out, out the shadows, but this is nowhere near the kidneys on the lateral. So at this point in time, you're going to be uh, uh, staying anterior. But in, uh, so we did a few things, and we looked for a, a few vessels here. And again, I just show you the different parts. Again, trying to find the segments where you could position the the the, um, the biopsy system in the, just the best place away from any of the important structures that, you, uh, like the kidneys. Now again, you notice that as we rotate, we're changing the angle so that stays low anterior. Again, if you look at the AP view, you'll, you'll think you're gonna hit the kidneys, but the kidneys are back here, so we're not near it on the lateral projection. And then we advance the biotome out, and then we'll um, st stab, and one hand is holding, oh, I didn't show it, let me go back a little bit. I don't know if I can go back on this. Uh, anyways, you, you saw the earlier part. So we take a picture in this case, actually we did not get the staining that I usually typically will see, but we got the specimens we needed. Um, now, now there are definitely lesser invasive ways to evaluate liver now. So especially for, uh, there's a new technology of using magnetic resonance elastography. Now we don't have that in our institution, but I know that there's some available in some places now. What we've been using is the FibroScan, which is using ultrasound uh, elastography. And I won't go through all the systems here, but this is what it is. In fact, we are able to get this as part of research grants. So we don't charge patients for this. We just do this as part of a study. And basically, it's a, we call it the thumb the, 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 this machine generates a, 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 a thump, creating a wave through the liver and then bounces back and you, you're, you're actually assessing the stiffness uh, uh, from that thump, that ultrasound uh, um, wave. And of course, the more serotic, the more fibrotic is, the lesser that is. Again, I don't have expertise, and we do this with, in connection with our hepatologists, uh, looking at the severity. And so at this point, we're still trying to study and how to correlate uh, the stiffness of the liver using ultrasound versus what we find in the cath lab using biopsies. Um, now, what's interesting is, is that, remember the last case I showed you where the hemodynamics were excellent by all standards, but this is what we found. Okay, so the correlation actually, um, we're trying to figure out whether, how can we correlate our biopsy specimens to some of the uh, lesser invasive. And obviously, if we can do that, we'd rather go with lesser invasives. Um, and how do you compare this to hemodynamics, exercise testing? And so those are the things we're trying to look at now. And hopefully in a few years, we'll have more data. But um, of, of course, the next question is that, let's say the patient does have liver fibrosis, how do you manage it? Because right now, we don't have good answers for this. Uh, the only thing we've done differently is that we've been much more aggressive at, at adding Sildenafil to to the to try to minimize any of the vena uh, uh, pressures uh, as much as we can, but this is the biopsies uh, report that we got back from that last case. I'm not just going to highlight some of the parts. So this is the biopsy, and I'll uh, just point this out in the circles. So the patient had a leech stage three to four uh, fibrosis, and I just thought I, that blew me away because I didn't expect that on a patient who had such good Fontan numbers, and the overall he had moderate to severe fibrosis and this is from having the Fontaine for what uh, he's 20 years old 15 years um, a little bit more and yet again we find the severe uh, fibrosis even though the Fontaine physiology is quite good so that actually got me thinking even more we need to pay attention to these patients and 
figure out uh, what this is mean and how can we manage it uh, if we're gonna have these longer survivals. Um, so again, this is all new at this time. We're trying to sort this out in studies. But let me just summarize that the transjugular liver biopsy can be performed safely in Fontan patients. It's a relatively simple procedure with a few easily avoidable complications, and I went through that. We typically use the hepatic segments five and eight to get to that majority part of the liver. Fontan mean pressures do not necessarily correlate with the degree of fibrosis. Uh, there are definitely more, uh, there are lesser invasive ways to correlate this. And again, this is all part of the study right now. Uh, we think that the exercise physiology may be a promising predictor. And of course, there are longer and lar larger follow-up studies that are on the way. And uh, right now, we don't have any good treatment for dealing with this fibrosis in the liver uh, due to the Fontan physiology. Uh, but again, the studies are ongoing. Thank you.